All right, so this begins the uh, first part of a four-part series where we're just going to do Google Firebase, and we're going to do the classic CRUD um, set of you know things to do. So creating, reading, updating, and deleting. So we're going to try to create something in Firebase, read something in Firebase, uh, update it, and delete it. So start by cre creating a new app. We'll call this CRUD. Code. Yeah, we'll call it CRUD, okay? I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to say new folder. I'm going to say code tutorial underscore crud. Okay. And I'm going to create it in here. All right. And so now I'm going to go to, let's go to actually terminal. Okay. And first things first, we might as well get started and initialize a pod file. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say, code tutorial so I'm just going to the directory of where that project is uh, crud okay crud. no such directory okay, let's find exactly where it is it should be here so desktop code tutorials that's why code tutorials underscore crud okay that's perfect now I'm in the right folder uh, I'll just do pod in it all right, now if I look inside here, I should have a pod file. Okay, so let's open up that pod file. And it's ready to go for when we want to use it, okay? So now I'm going to go over to uh, the Firebase console, and I'm going to create a new project, okay? I'm going to say add project, crud, tutorials. tutorials okay continue I'll continue just say default account create project so now it's creating the project and so let's close some of these guys and what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the firebase um, interactions so we're going to need to add a pod in here okay and that pod is going to be the firebase pod so it's gonna once this set finishes up here it's going to tell us exactly what to add in the pod file. So we'll continue. Cred tutorials, and we'll click on here for iOS. All right. And for the iOS bundle, let's go look at our project. So if we look at our project, by clicking on this blue one, this is our bundle ID, okay? So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna ignore those two for now. I'm gonna register the application. All right, I'm gonna download the plist file. All right, and then I'm going to put that inside of my project right here above the other plist, okay? I'm gonna click finish, all right? And then I'm just gonna change this name here, okay? Right there, perfect. All right, and so now that I've done that, we'll click next. That's what we're gonna copy, so I'll copy that. I just click on that button, I paste it, oh sorry. Oh, we already did that actually, so we need to copy this piece and we'll paste that right there. Okay, so we really don't need this, don't need that. Okay, so save it. Now we'll go back to the terminal and we'll do pod install. Okay, and in this series, we actually are going to do Firebase storage as well. So let's go ahead and just put that in there while we're here, okay? Storage. And lastly, actually, let's do Firestore as well. Okay. When this wraps up, we will rerun it with these extra two right here, okay? So the next thing it's gonna ask us to do when we click next, it's gonna say add the initialization code. So I'll let this finish up really quickly. So sometimes you'll find that it doesn't look like it's doing all this. It might be taking a second if you've got a slower computer. Sometimes it doesn't show you all these immediately, but it's, it's working in the background. If it doesn't give you an error, that means it's working. And so, uh, be a little patient with it, especially if it's the first time or you're installing a lot of new pods. Um, you know, the more things you're installing for the first time, the the longer it takes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to now I'm going to save that. I'm just going to install that one more time. Okay, and in the meantime, so that's good. Okay, in the meantime, so this one right here is going to allow us to add images, and this one's going to let us use the new Firestore protocols. Okay, so I'm going to go over to here. And I'm going to open the uh, app delegate. 
actually, I'm going to close this whole thing really quickly, this whole project. And the reason I'm closing the project is I'm going to go over to the desktop and I'm going to go to my CRUD tutorial. And from now on, we need to work with the workspace. So once you've installed CocoaPods, you need to work with the workspace, not a project, okay? So now that I'm working in the workspace, a lot of the files are similar, but there are a few changes. So we're going to open the app delegate, okay? And we're going to first grab this piece. We're going to import Firebase. You're going to put that right there. And then you're going to take this piece, the Firebase configure, and you're going to toss that right inside, uh, right here. Did finish launching with options. It has to be above return true, okay? So we save that, and then you'll click next. And then what we'll do is we'll run it on the simulator, okay? So let's check on the terminal. The terminal is still going, okay? Let's check on our application. So we're still building right now. And once this finishes building, it'll show up in the simulator like that. CRUD has now launched. Okay. And it just should just be showing us the content view. Okay. Which will say hello world. There we go. Analytics collection enabled. So we go back here. Let's see if it noticed that we're here. It hasn't. So See what happens. Just click anything. Click around. I mean, you know, I, I personally have, I've had trouble with this before, where it doesn't seem to register what's happening. So it's saying you may need to uninstall and reinstall your app. We can go ahead and do that as well. So I will go, go home on the simulator, kill it, and we will run it one more time. Okay, actually, there you go. Congratulations, you've successfully connected. So we'll continue to the console, okay? So that was the first piece. So now we've already connected now our, uh, we've connected to Firebase. So the next thing we need to do is we need to import Firebase into our content view, okay? So the goal of the tutorial is just to create the, uh, the C in the CRUD. So CRUD, we'll say C-R-U-D right here, okay? Is equal to create, read, update, delete. So this tutorial, we're, we're going to focus on create, okay? So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add a text field, okay? And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to actually create a vStack, and inside that vStack, I'm going to put just, actually, I'm going to put this text field right here inside that vStack, okay? And I'm going to make it say add a new name okay and we will give it a text value uh, so we need to give it a bindable object to to um, for like a state variable so we'll say add state and we'll say this uh, and we'll say this one so uh, let's just say add a restaurant okay and then we'll say state variable, restaurant name equal to that, and then we'll bind those two together. So rest, restaurant name, okay? And below it, I'll put, uh, let's say, rate this restaurant, okay? All right, restaurant, rating it's going to be equal to zero and then we'll go here and actually what we should probably do we'll make this say restaurant rating and we're just going to give it a value of a string but well here sorry about that so i'm going to grab that okay and we'll make that a string and then we'll come here and we'll just say keyboard type dot number pad, okay? And so that's good to go. And then underneath those two text fields, we'll just create a new area that we will later use in the scroll view, okay? For now, we'll just put a text inside of it. And I'll say, this will be the scroll view, okay? We'll give it a frame. Type of let's just say 
200 and a width of UI screen dot main dot bounds dot size dot width. Okay. And we'll give it a background of dot red. All right, so we're zooming. Let's take a look at what we made. All right. So we've got a V stack with two text fields and a scroll view. So let's go ahead and building it. And then while that's going, let's go ahead and set up our storage. Or actually, our database first. We'll go to the Firestore database. We'll say create database, start in test mode. And I'm going to just use whatever the default is as so central. Okay. And so we'll let this continue building while we work on this other piece. So provisioning Cloud Firestore. And then after we set up the Firestore, we're going to actually have to set up the, um, the storage as well. So we can see it's running through the tasks right now for the build. All right. And so for the purposes of this app, when it comes to security, we're going to make it completely no security so you can... Um, well, the goal essentially of no security is that it's going to be a lot easier to deal with authentication. So I'm going to go to rules here. Um, yeah. I'm just going to go, we'll go to data, and this is where you can put you know collections and documents. If you need more information about that, I'll put a link for what my favorite uh, Firestore video is in the description. Okay. So this guy's almost done building. While that's finishing up, let's go ahead and set up our storage as well. So I'll say get started, and we'll click next. And we'll say done as well. And now it's creating a bucket. And a bucket is where things are stored. Uh, the other thing is we will make this have absolutely no rules when it comes to security as well, just for ease of use. So we'll come here, we'll get rid of that. Put a semicolon instead of a colon. Publish. Okay, and now both our storage of data and our storage of files are set up. Okay. And now we'll just let this finish setting up and then we'll continue looking at it. Okay, and so now that I finished building, we had just a couple silly mistakes. Got to put the word color dot red. I'm gonna actually get rid of this height because I don't want it to limit uh, to be limited. I want it to actually fill up all the vertical space it can. So once more, I'll save it and I'll run it, and that should build successfully. Okay, and here it is, perfect. All right, now for each of these, I'm just gonna give them a little padding so it looks a little nicer. Okay, just a little touch. And uh, the other thing is that our terminal has now finished running. So our terminal, uh, I actually closed it, but it successfully installed Firestore um, and also the storage module for Fire for Firebase. Okay, so I'll save it. And now the next thing I need to do is I actually need to just, need to just implement the function for adding a new uh, recipe. Okay, or sorry, not recipe, a new restaurant. So underneath the scroll view, really quickly, I'm going to add a button. Okay. And the button is going to be text that says add review or add rating. Okay. And the action will be as follows. Let's look at, I kind of wrote it out in advance. So this is from a different project, but we'll just reuse it and modify it. So we'll say let document reference equal firestore.firestore. So let's get rid of this. And data to save so we'll also we'll, we'll talk about each of these uh, separately so I'm going to say import firebase firestore as well okay so I'm importing firestore and essentially firestore saves everything in a uh, in a dictionary format so what I'm going to do is whenever I click that button I'm going to say let rating dictionary equal okay and the first entry will be name, okay? And that will be equal to the restaurant name. And the second will be, let's say, rating, and self.restaurant self rating, okay? Restaurant rating, perfect. And then now we need to decide where we're gonna save it, okay? And so, we are essentially telling it where this needs to go. And so we're going to start with a collection. We'll say the collection that it's going to be saved in will be called restaurant 
which is actually what's called reviews, okay, or ratings. So the big thing is, is notice that if I actually go to my, right now I have no collection. I don't have anything saved in here. So if I try to save to a path that doesn't exist, it creates that path for me, which is great. So I'm going to say save to ratings. Okay. And then I want it to be a unique rating every single time. So I'm going to say ratings. And the document name will be equal to a brand new UUID. And then I'm going to say UUID string. Okay. So just to make sure we know what we got here, it says setting data, and then the data that we want to set is going to be equal to rating dictionary. Okay, and if it's not successful, it'll print error for us. And if it is successful, it'll print data uploaded successfully. Okay, and I'll just get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. And that's that, okay. So whenever I click the button, it should upload the rating. Okay, so I'll save it. And then, um, I'm going to add just one last thing. Okay, I'm going to add, I'm going to say, if successful, if it says if data uploaded successfully, then I'm going to take restaurant rating, and I'm going to say it's now going to be equal to nothing. So we're clearing out those fields, okay? Restaurant name as well. Perfect, and let's save it and run it. Let's see what we got. Okay, and if everything worked correctly, I should be able to Type something up. Okay, I'll say at a restaurant. Call this uh, steakhouse called J Alexander's. Okay, and I'll rate the restaurant five. Okay, so I'll add the rating. Data uploaded successfully, and I know it's successful because now these are empty again. Okay, so if I look here, I refresh this page. Sure enough, we actually have a ratings collection, okay? Yeah, ratings collection. In that collection, I have my first uh, item, and it's a unique item with this document ID, okay? And its name is J. Alexander's, and it has a rating of five, okay? And so that takes care of the create function, and the next thing we're gonna set up in the next video is the read function, all right? So I'll see you in the next one.